Hello Cornets, I hope you guys are all doing well. We here at Barcelona Universal have recently had the opportunity to do an interview with Barcelona presidential candidate Victor Font. We've asked him several questions regarding his project and his future ideas at Football Club Barcelona. So I hope you guys do enjoy the video and let's get into it. A bit of a roller coaster, right? <laughs> we started... Uh after obviously the end of last season which was extremely disappointing and the whole very difficult summer that all the fans uh, we've gone through with the messy affair and everything we started with uh, with hope right uh, because the team started well and we saw young players uh, performing very well not only Ansu who had already done it last year but also you know the arrival of Pedri who at some point there was a lot of talk saying that maybe the guy would uh, would be uh, you know given on loan but uh, it was good to see Ronald Koeman uh, very much uh, betting on on this type of players and seeing that the team uh, reconnected and and being competitive again but unfortunately uh, and it's normal right I mean in the start of uh, any new coach uh, people need time uh, and the problem is that this club now has a lot of instability and lacks time. And the problem also is that when you put a coach in the middle of, uh, I would call it even a kind of a broken project because there's been no project uh, for many, many months, obviously it's even more challenging and even more difficult. Well, lack of project, lack of leadership, lack of uh, the new ideas that are required to compete in the 21st century in a, in a very changing world. We've seen it uh, in all our lives, right? I mean, this pandemic has opened up the eyes of many people and we see that we need to reinvent ourselves. So also the club. Uh, and unfortunately, the club has missed proper leadership and a proper vision for, for quite some time now. And that basically is affecting the different areas of the club. It affects the sports, uh, the lack of a sports project affects the teams and affects our level of uh, 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 competitiveness. Uh, it obviously affects, it has affected the economy because we've made bad choices and bad decisions where we've made huge investments that have not generated any returns. We've had even institutional problems like uh, the bar to gate uh, you know uh, using uh, money from us the members uh, to uh, to go against uh, some people in the environment uh, and in the uh, around the club so unfortunately that has created a lot of instability right Uh, it's a it's a well thought project uh, that has been in the making for years, as many of the, you guys may uh, know or remember. Uh, this is the only way that I believe projects can be successful when they are properly thought, and most importantly, when you spend time thinking about the people that need to be part of it. Uh, many of you, all of us, have projects in our lives, be it. You know, our families are personal projects. Uh, whatever we do in our professional life are uh, our professional projects. With friends, sometimes, you know, we, we do stuff as well. And it, everything ends up relying on the people. Uh, people uh, are the ones that make uh, projects uh, successful. And that's what we've been doing. And with one uh, sole intention, which is that, as I was saying before, in the 21st century, we need to take the club to the 21st century. We need to uh, do structural changes to the club and bring new ideas. New ideas such as putting the soci, the member, in the middle of the club. Listen more to the members. Uh, make them even decide some uh, you know, uh, issues that affect uh, the uh, symbology of the club. Uh, if we want to change uh, the name of a, of a stadium or uh, of a facility, uh, why would uh, this be uh, decided by the board itself and why not by the members? Why can't we ask Nike to give us three options for our first team kit next year and we are the ones deciding about this? 
this is the beauty of having a club which is owned by 150,000 people, right? That we should not be just asked our opinion once every six years whenever there are elections. We should be able to participate more often and make sure that the board listens uh, to us uh, and explains to us what's the reality. This also means changing the governance of the club. We have, uh, you know, the assemblies that are not representatives of, uh, of the members uh, and they, uh, you know, they are executed poorly by whomever is on the board uh, to somehow control the reality. We need to change this. We want to change the mandates and reduce them from six years to four years. We want to remove the bank guarantees so that any member who has the right experience can become a board member. Uh, we want to uh, instill a, a very innovative um, uh, business model that will allow us to monetize millions of funds we have around the world. This is the best way if we also do a proper management of the expenses to generate uh, excess funds and be able to renew our stadium uh, to ensure that we put more money into the sports teams and we are competitive and most importantly that we protect the ownership structure. We want to make sure that women who are very relevant in our society and also in Barcelona, because more than one quarter of our members are women, that they take relevant positions in the club, not only in our sports project, but also in the board and in the executive uh, responsibilities. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, we have a stadium which is full again of members and not just, uh, you know, uh, people that do not belong uh, necessarily to the club and so on and so on and so on. So it's a set of new ideas and most importantly, as I said, being implemented and executed by the ones that know the best or know the most about each area of the club. We want sports uh, decisions to be taken by the guys that know most about uh, each sport. We want business decisions taken by the best possible uh, executives uh, in the world. And we want a board that has the right experience to be able to supervise everything, right? So those are quite, uh, you know, ambitious changes to the way the club has worked uh, until recently. Time to start uh, afresh, time for a new beginning. Gen I would even say general manager, right? I mean, when we started um, working uh, a few years ago and uh, one of the first things we did was to try to get to know some of the legends, some of the key uh, assets that we have within Barca, right? People that have played a role in the club in the past, be it uh, former players, former uh, board members, uh, former executives, so that we could understand who can take which role and responsibility in this very ambitious project. And in the sports, uh, on the sports side and in football, obviously we got to know a number of, uh, of these um, uh, legends uh, and we ended up concluding that Xavi is a very unique uh, person, uh, someone who can take different roles and responsibilities outside of the pitch. He can obviously be, I'm sure he's going to be the best coach in the world, but beyond that, he can, uh, you know, uh, take different leadership roles uh, within a sports project. Why? Because he carries uh, leadership uh, skills. Uh, he's very good at uh, managing uh, teams. He's good at communicating, at assembling teams, at making sure that teams perform uh, well together. He also loves the club. He knows the club uh, mm -hmm. inside out. Uh, he's been... Uh, he just today, I just read that uh, 120 journalists uh, by France Football have uh, selected him as the best uh, midfielder in the history of our sport. So imagine the type of asset that Xavi is, right? So we can, what we cannot afford is what has happened with Pep, that he stayed with us for four years, he loves the club, he's a culé, he's a huge Barca fan, but uh, after his last uh, contract, which has been renewed now at Manchester City, he's going to be uh, end up being seven years with Manchester City. And with us, it was only four, right? So we need to create the right conditions for Xavi, who is such a unique uh, asset uh, of the club, to be able to stay uh, a long time uh, working for, for Barca.
Well, hopefully, I mean, our ambition is that um, as soon as elections take place and if we have the honor to be selected, uh, stability will come right after to the club, right? And with the right uh, changes and uh, with the right vision and with the right leadership, I'm sure that uh, because we have the talent and uh, we still have today uh, in football, for example, the best player in, in the world is still with us, right? And we still have a lot mm -hmm. of talented players. So by bringing the right leadership, the right vision, I'm sure that will uh, become competitive again. And then all the work and this leadership and this vision needs to help us do the final phase of transition from this very unique um, set of players that have brought to us the best years uh, in our history with lots of uh, silverware uh, to ensure that we transition into a new era where we remain competitive. That's our goal to keep the club in the hands of its members and to continue competitive, hopefully winning uh, many more Champions Leagues in the years to come. No, I mean, he obviously uh, knows what's cooking, right? And he, mm -hmm. as a huge Barca fan, he knows uh, who is... Uh, who has a project, who has which ideas. Uh, I'm sure that he reads the press and he probably listens to your channels even uh, mm -hmm. or reads you. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, the intention is uh, the, the sports organization that we've built uh, would like to obviously retain the best player in the world, who is Messi. Uh, he, uh, you know, is a very talented, he's the best player in the history of the sport, but, you know, he's taken care of himself very well throughout his career. He's not had serious injuries, and I'm sure he can still play, maybe even adapting his role on the pitch uh, for, for a few years uh, still, right? And we want to, uh, to retain that talent. That's about creating the conditions to retain that type of talent as well. And even later on, ensure that whenever he retires, that the association Messi-Barça, Barça-Messi uh, prevails. Uh, I think it's very important that this association uh, you know, continues for many, many years. That allows me to, to, to stress one of the changes that we want to implement, right? Which is this type of decision should mm -hmm. be made uh, not by a football fan like myself, True. Uh, but by the sports organization. If you have the right sports organization with the right uh, expertise, with the right vision, with the right talent, they should be empowered to make such calls. Obviously, me as president needs to, uh, you know, validate any decision that is made there to ensure that, you know, I can make the right questions and make sure that everything that uh, is proposed makes sense. Mm -hmm. But the ones that know, the ones that should call this type of shots, uh, should be the, the guys that uh, that know the, the best uh, about, in this case, about our football project. Yeah, because when you, have, when you have a president who is just a football fan or board members who are business people that do not know, uh, do not belong to the professional world of football, uh, you know, allowing, allowing them to make signings, to uh, dismiss people, to fire people, it's a very dangerous thing. But that's how the model has worked until now. And that's why we say 21st century, new beginning, we need new ideas, a new way of doing things. Uh, I mean, I think that this is not just uh, an opinion, I think it's a fact. And I believe it's been even explained as such by by some people within the club, right? As the, the exchange Siles and Neto uh, was driven by the same reasons, right? That's why we need to change uh, the, uh, the rules of the game. That's why we need to remove the bank guarantees so that they don't become a bit of a threat for the board and uh, make sure that then the board is not incentivized to make decisions that are not the best decisions for the club.
have uh, the plan has two phases, right? We have a, a very um, relevant short-term restructuring plan. We need to restructure the cost structure of the of the club, uh, and we need to refinance its balance sheet, its debt, because there is short-term debt uh, of four or five hundred million that uh, basically we would not be able to take care of uh, now this coming summer. So we need to refinance that. But then in parallel, we need to uh, build the foundations for a proper longer term plan that, as I said at the beginning, brings uh, allows us to monetize the millions and millions of funds that we have around the world so that we can serve uh, people like uh, you know any of us uh, providing uh, us uh, the right uh, product services, the right content, because we are eager, right, to consume uh, Barca uh, products and services. And, and by doing that, we will be helping the club uh, to keep its independence, to remain strong, and make sure that we can take care of all the future projects uh, without the need of, uh, you know, increasing debt again, or even putting our ownership model at risk. It's the lack of, of, a, of a sports project with the right vision, right? Uh, what has created all these problems. Uh, players like Eric Garcia, uh, who now, uh, you know, uh, the club wants him to come back. And I think this is great news, uh, but he should have uh, been retained, right? Uh, and he left just because he did not believe in the future opportunities within Barca. Pep Guardiola came, he basically sold uh, to him the idea that within uh, the sports organization that has been built at Manchester City, he could have a bright future. He believed him. Uh, and that's what we need, right? We need this uh, type of uh, project with the right vision, with the right leadership to ensure that we can retain uh, the talent that we have within La Masia and that uh, all these players uh, believe again in the chances, in the possibilities of becoming players of the first team and, uh, and by doing that, we'll retain that talent. And that's critical, right? Because having um, and betting on La Masia is very much required for three reasons. Number one, because these youngsters, because they've been trained around our style of play, when they become players in the first team, they, uh, they play better uh, within the system that we want to instill. Secondly, because obviously we save a lot of money. We don't need to buy them and therefore, uh, you know, we save the investment. And number three, they are Barca, they are huge Barca fans like you and me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the level of commitment that they have uh, and everything is much, much greater than any signing that you get from the outside. Will in the next uh, days and weeks, uh, but uh, but yeah, obviously, I mean that's the work we've been doing, right? To try to understand the type of talent we have within the club. Uh, some of them are legends, and uh, when I met them for the first time, I was even shaking <laughs> myself. Yeah. But uh, you know, that's the type of investment that one needs to make. Uh, spend time, get to know what you know, what uh, what what sits behind uh, the name, the the name of a legend and understand, try to assess the right, uh, the type of capabilities that everyone has. And then you build the proper structure and uh, you try to convince them to take the type of responsibilities that you think they can take. Always, I mean, uh, we need to be uh, optimists. Uh, the future belongs to the optimists. Uh, and I'm an optimist myself. Mm -hmm. And as I said the, uh, before, the good news is that at the end of January, uh, the new beginning uh, starts. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, at that point in time, we will still have not played against uh, PSG in the, uh, in the Champions League. Mm -hmm. um, we, we still will be alive for sure in, the, in La Liga uh, and hopefully in a better position than today. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, the cup is also up for grabs, right? Mm -hmm. So providing the right instability with the right uh, leadership, have no doubt that we'll have our chances.
know that any if there are any members uh, listening to us look uh, the next uh, the upcoming elections are the most important elections in the history of the club if you are members or you and i know that uh, there's many uh, fans uh, reading uh, your channel and listening to your channel but now it is important that we uh, that this uh, information reaches the members because the future of the club is in the hands of the members so hopefully uh, you know, everyone will understand that uh, the future depends on uh, on uh, on new ideas, on on new people, on uh, on a new beginning. Uh, the future is bright, but we need to decide well.